Good morning. I'm Elle. I'm the Keystone Stitcher, and this is my floss tube special about mania. <laughs> if you're new and you don't know what mania is, mania was started in 2015 by a group of people from a Facebook group in which they did 15 starts in the first 15 days to celebrate the year 2015. Since then, it's snowballed. People have made it their own. There have been Mermaid May. There is Mirror May. There, I mean, there's, there's all kinds. There's Monogamous May, which is what I usually do. I usually can find, I couldn't this year, one piece, full coverage, that is close enough to a finish that if I really give it my all, I can finish it in the month of May. One year I had a piece that was much closer than you know, I needed for the month and I was able to finish that full coverage and a non-full coverage and had two finishes in the month. And I've called my monogamous May. This year, I do not have a full coverage piece close enough to a finish. I don't have anything. I have, I have a little project that I could finish in about a week, but that's not gonna take up a month. So I came up with something totally new. And before I tell you what that category is, I found four projects that fit in this category. Before I tell you, let me tell you how I'm going to work it. I have finishing goals for the year and I don't want to lose those. I'm a little ahead of where I need to be. So that allows me some flexibility and time to play around with mania. So I'm going to take four projects and I'm going to work on them one project a week. I'm going to give it 500 stitches per day. Now, I don't know about the weekends. I, I haven't got there yet. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work during the week, see how I feel. If I'm really feeling it, I'll work on those projects on the weekend. If not, I'll switch it up with something else from my whip pile just so that I don't feel pressured or bored. So what is my category? All right, my category, are you ready? It's macabre. I, you know, come on, I've, I've got Beetlejuice behind me, right? I've got, now macabre is, Beetlejuice doesn't, well, yeah, Beetlejuice would count. A lot of people don't understand, they think macabre is just anything scary or creepy or, macabre really means having to do with death, which really says something about my stitching because I didn't realize I had four projects that either directly or indirectly through, say, superstition, have something to do with death, but I have four of them. So let me introduce you to those four projects. Now I'm not going to get into stitch counts and percentages today. I just want to show you the project, show you where they're at and how they fit this category of macabre. And so the first one, I'm sorry, my voice is going, going today. My first one is, I'll put it over here, Masquerade by Christopher Lovell or Lovell. And this is one, I started this first doing the whole thing. So it, it had the background. This is the image of what it looks like without background. I realized after doing a full page on background that I could eliminate 100,000 stitches if I didn't do the background. So now I'm stitching it on a piece of hand-dyed fabric without the background. I'm removing the background as I go. And here's where I am. So I started this in February of 2021, which means <laughs> this has gotten very little work. And this is a good size piece. So this will be the first one. And obviously skulls, you know, you can see here, this definitely fits with the, with the subject of death. So that's number one. Now, these are in no particular order. I'm going to just kind of pick up whatever one suits me on a particular day. So when the week starts, whichever one is calling, that's the one that will get picked. This next one, oh, did I say that uh, masquerade is by Unconventional Cross Stitch? This next one is a Heaven and Earth Design. The artwork is by Stephanie Pui Moon Law and is part of her like tarot series. This is one for Sorrow and it is here. Now that bird is a magpie. And when you have one magpie, it brings sorrow. Hence the name of the, of the project. Superstitiously, it is said that the magpie was the only bird that did not come and sing during Jesus' crucifixion. It is also said that there was the magpie had a cut in its tongue and a drop of the devil's blood was put in the tongue 
and therefore it is the harbinger of evil because it is connected to Satan. In less mythological terms, shall we say, it is said that the magpie is the harbinger of death because it scavenges and it eats dead animals. So this is where I am on this. Now this was started the very last week, so after Christmas, in December of 2020. And that's all the further I've gotten. So this needs to come out, but because that's a magpie, now if you have two magpies, it's good luck because they mate for life. If you have one, it's sorrow, it's, it's everything bad. So that's that one. My next one, the next two actually, are new starts. So you, if you've seen me recently, you know what they are. This first one is my owl. It's called Eyes of the Forest. My fabric is not cooperating with me. Owls in such as Native American, okay, here's Eyes of the Forest. And Native American beliefs, such as the Apache, they believe that if you dream of an owl, it means impending death. Other tribes believe that an owl, um, if you, you hear the owl, it, it means there's an impending death coming. There's also groups that believe that there are only so many souls in the world available and that you need to have someone pass to have a new life. And therefore, when they hear the owl, the owl means someone is going to pass and there will be a new life coming. So this is my new start. This is kind of a, a sneak preview because the last time you saw there was only like 300 stitches. But this is where I'm at so far on Eyes of the Forest. So being a new start, that would be a blast to have that done. Or not done, but have more done on it. Okay, my next one. My next one really fits macabre because, well, it does. So this one is not mythological or anything else. This is Death in the Garden, and it looks like this. The artwork is by Megan Majeski. And, oh, I didn't say the owl. Um, that pattern can be found on mybobbin.com. This is by Megan Majeski, and it, it is macabre. You have a dead woman laying in a garden, and her brain is growing out of her eye socket. I mean, come on. So here's where I am. This was just started this past month. And do I have that upright? Yes. So this is the far right page. And it's mostly one color now to fill in and finish this, this one page. So that is Death in the Garden. So those are my main projects. Now, like I mentioned, I'm not sure that I will want to work on each of these for seven straight days. I tend to burn out about five days. If I try to push it beyond five days, I don't want to stitch on it anymore. So that leaves me open on the weekends. And I've decided that on the weekends, I will pick from whatever I want if I'm not feeling these projects. One of those I'm going to show you now, just because it does not fit macabre, but it fits my previous monogamous May, and that is the old sled. This is from December 2023, Just Cross Stitch magazine. And here's where that is now. So you can see this is, okay, here's my hand. It's not very big. It is a full coverage. This is the very top, and it's kind of, it's not a straight top. So I just need to fill this in. If I pick this up one day each, one day on the weekend, so four days out of the month, I could come very close to a finish. And then I would have a finish in May, which was always my thing. So that's what I've decided to do. Now, what does it say that I have so many projects that in some way can be related to death? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to explore that. But I like them. I chose them because I was drawn to their colors or, or something about them. Um, so yeah, are you doing Mania? And if you are, I would love to hear what you're doing. If you've come up with something else, something unique, you know, like I said, people have done mermaids and mirrors. And so if you've come up with something that nobody else has thought of, tell me, I'd love to know what it is. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye 
and I will see you on May 1st. See ya!